Hello everyone and welcome back to So You Want To Be A Vet. I'm Erin and I'm a second year veterinary medicine student at the University of Nottingham. I'm also a Medic Mentor Scholar along with Sophia. If you want to find out a little bit more about Medic Mentor then I'm going to leave some information up here at the end of the video and in the description box below. They offer so many different extracurricular opportunities to help you enhance your application to vet school. These come in the form of conferences and guidebooks and so many more opportunities that I'll go into more detail about at the end so stay tuned for that. Speaking of applying to vet school, today's video is going to be on one of the biggest parts of the application process, which is the UCAS personal statement. So for those of you that don't know, if you're applying to vet school through the traditional UK route through UCAS, you're required to write a 4,000 character personal statement. This essentially showcases you as a person to the universities that you apply to, and there's three main questions you need to answer within this. The first is, why are you a good candidate to study veterinary medicine at their institution? The second is, why do you want to be a vet? And the third is, what interests you about the veterinary profession? And this can be anything about research, about work in practice, what actually interests you and has drawn you to that career. So at first 4,000 characters can sound like a lot, but it's really not because this includes full stops, commas, all your punctuation, all of your spaces and so before you know it the character count is taken up. So for this reason it can sound really overwhelming at first but today I'm going to go through all the key things you need to know to write a fantastic personal statement. I'm going to go through everything from what to do before writing your personal statement, where to start, the don'ts of personal statement writing, so essentially your big red flags that you never want to do, the overall structure you should use, and where you can go to find further help and support should you need it. It can be really difficult to go straight into writing your personal statement, so I'm just going to have a little chat about a couple of things that you can do beforehand to make the process a lot more stress-free and easier for you. So the best way to start, I think, is to write a list of all the things you've done as an extracurricular, be that academic or non-academic. So have a little think about any books you've read to do with the profession, any lectures you've attended at vet schools, any summer schools you've done, perhaps you play a musical instrument, or you do cadets, or play a sport, or you've done something like Duke of Edinburgh or NCS. Write these down in a big long list. Now, after this, go through and have a little bit of a think about your time on placement and note down the five most memorable moments from your whole work experience. Try and think a little bit about what you thought when you were watching the procedure, think about what the vet did, any important decisions that had to be made, note down what interested you. This is going to be a really good resource that you can use to jog your memory. And it's so common to get writer's block or to get a bit lost in your paragraphs, so this makes sure that you can always stay on track. So the next best thing to do is to go through this list and have a little think about the different things that you've done. And with a different colour pen or a different font, think about each extracurricular and how you can link this to the role of a vet. So for example, if you did something like Duke of Edinburgh, perhaps the weather was horrible or you were put in a team that you didn't particularly get along well with or gel with at first, perhaps this helps you build your resilience up. This is a really crucial skill for a vet because vets have to do long shifts, they have to tell people that their pet of 10 years has to be put to sleep and they have to persevere through everything because their job needs to be done because it's so, so important. Resilience is a key skill for being a vet. By linking to this in your personal statement, you can explicitly show the reader at the university that you have the necessary skills required by a vet. So you might now be wondering how you make sure you only include things that matter. It's really important to include the extracurriculars on your list that you feel you can make the strongest links to being a vet with. I'm going to go through linking a little bit now and I'm going to start off with linking your placements. So when you're talking about placement you don't really want to make a list of all the different things you've seen. You want to talk about what you saw, why it interested you and what questions you had and what you did to find the answers to these questions and this really clearly demonstrates to the reader in the admissions office how your process works and how you have that logical problem solving approach that is so crucial for a vet. I'm going to go through this with an example from my own personal statement. Starting off with what you saw, you want to think about what questions you had initially in practice. 
So for example, when I was on placement, I saw a pug come in with severe grade 4 BOAS and I sort of wondered how this pug got to this stage, was it a fault of the owner, was it a fault of misinformation by the breeder, perhaps this pug was like genetically predisposed to this condition, perhaps it was always going to have severe BOAS and why hadn't it been noted down sooner. You want to think about that initial thought process you had. Now have a bit of a think about why this situation interested you. So for me, I was really interested because I thought, what can we do to increase owner and breeder awareness of this condition? And what can we do to encourage more responsible breeding? Next, you want to talk a little bit about what you did to find the answers to these questions. Did you read a book? Did you watch a webinar? Did you attend a lecture? Perhaps you emailed a specialist? How did you find these answers? So for me, I went on to explain that I conducted and completed an extended project qualification, which is an EPQ, if you've heard of it, it's half of an A-level, in how increasing owner and breeder awareness could decrease the amount of BOAS-related deaths. Um, this directly showed the reader of my personal statement that I was able to think in a way that was eliminative and I was able to solve problems and this will do the same for you if you link through your placement experience in this way. You only want to do this once so don't do it for all five of your experiences that you've written down. Perhaps write a mock paragraph for two or three and then choose the best one, the one that you think is strongest and shows that you can problem solve best. So we've spoken a little bit now about linking within your placement experiences. Now we're gonna talk more about linking within your extracurricular experiences. So you've got your big list of all the different things you've done and all the different skills you think you've gained from these things. Now think about and note down the top three skills that you believe a vet should have. Perhaps it's resilience, perhaps it's problem solving, perhaps it's the ability to work in a team or to be able to make crucial decisions and to work within a time frame. It can be any of these things. These should be the top three qualities that you believe a vet should have. Now have a look at your list and see which of these skills demonstrate that you have these three qualities. Then the next paragraph of your personal statement should consist of sentences that talk about what you did, perhaps you achieved a grade six in piano. Talk about what this shows, perhaps this shows that you have manual dexterity. And then talk about why this is important for a vet. Manual dexterity is really important for a vet because you have to perform surgeries and perhaps you have to put a bandage on a really wriggly animal or give an injection to like a really aggressive animal. You need to be able to have those quick skills like playing a piano. Now, you don't want to write too much here. You literally want a sentence per extracurricular and include free maximum. And again, try not to list your different extracurriculars. Just talk about the ones that you believe demonstrate that you have these free skills. Now we're going to go on to structure. The ideal combination to have is this. So the first 40% or so should be your really short introduction, whether it's a sentence or two. Um, you want to talk about why you want to be a vet what you've seen that makes you sure you want to be a vet and what you believe the profession is about. Perhaps you believe the profession is about helping animals or research or the One Health concept. Try and get down in a really concise way what you believe it is and why you're interested in this. So you should use the next 40% to speak about your placements and use that linking format that I've just described. What did you see? Why did it interest you? And what did you do? So books, lectures, all these sorts of things go into this paragraph. The final 20% you just want to use to talk about your extracurriculars, again in the way I've just described, so your non-academic extracurriculars like football, hockey, violin, these sorts of things. You don't want it to be too long, you just want it to be these three or four concise sentences in the way I've just described, showing that you have the essential qualities that you believe a vet should have. Finally, you just need a really short conclusion. Now this can just be a little sum up of what you've written, perhaps what you aim to do with your career in the future, or where you believe the veterinary profession is going in the future. As I briefly mentioned before, there are some things that you shouldn't do when writing your personal statement or you should try not to do. So first of all, don't feel like you should have to start with the opening of your personal statement. This can be really difficult because it is such an important part and it's really difficult to write if you don't know what you're leading into. 
perhaps write your second and third paragraphs and then you can fit your introduction and your conclusion around it. This way you know what you're leading into and you can just bring a really, really nice flow to your statement. So as I've touched on before, you don't want to list everything you've ever done in your personal statement. This can be really difficult because if you've done really varied work experience, you want to be able to show this off and make this known. It's quality over quantity. You want to talk about what you found insightful rather than everything you've ever done. There's other opportunities to talk about this. So this could be an interview or some vet schools have a supplementary work experience form. If you want to find out a little bit more about whether your vet school choices require this work experience form, then have a little listen to our podcast here. Um, I've linked this in the description box below, but we have a small open pod series where we interview successful students from each UK vet school about what the course is like, what every, everything you'd ever want to know, everything you'd find out on an open day is covered in this podcast, including what supplementary forms there are to fill in. So if you want to find out more about that, then check out our podcast because you'll find the answers there. Next, try not to let the word count restrict you. This can be really easy to say, but try not to let the 4,000 character sort of cut off be in the forefront of your mind when writing your personal statement, because this can stop you from writing really, really brilliant paragraphs because you'll feel like, oh, I need to stop now because I'm nearing the character count. Write as many paragraphs as you can or as many paragraphs as you want and then you can cut these together in different ways to make the best personal statement you can. For example, you could have two paragraphs and you could have a really strong few sentences in one, a really strong few sentences in the other and you can just cut these together to make it the best paragraph. So try not to let the word count restrict you because that will stop you from writing these really high quality, brilliant things that your vet school are going to want to see. Finally, this is the biggest one. Don't start your personal statement. This can be so, so difficult because for a lot of people this is the case. But don't start your personal statement by saying veterinary medicine is my passion or I love animals or ever since I was five or six or seven or whatever, I've wanted to be a vet. Because this is the case for so many people and this is such a common starter for personal statements and Quite frankly, admissions are going to see this, you're not going to stand out and they're just going to put you into a different pile and it's going to be a no. Try and think about the things you've done that make you a standout candidate that would make admissions want you at their vet school. Try and avoid these things. It can be so hard, but it'll pay off in the long run. So we're coming to the end now. If you're wondering where you can go to get further help on personal statement writing, I'm going to signpost a few different resources and a few different places you can go for help here. Speak to vets on placement about what they did when they wrote their personal statement because they've been there, done that, written their personal statement, been to vet school and now they're doing the job you want to do. So they're a great, great place to go if you want to find out more about what they include in their personal statement. Then finally, try and give your personal statement to as many people as possible to read. Um, give it to your teachers, your parents, your carers, your siblings, friends. Get loads of different people to read it because they will give you really constructive criticism. Don't be afraid of the constructive criticism that they'll give you because this is the only way your personal statement is going to get better. I gave my personal statement to so many different people and I just said be brutal with it because I knew that was the only way my personal statement was going to go from really rubbish to the best one I could do. And that pretty much sums up everything you need to know on how to build a fantastic personal statement. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Medit Mentor for more on how to get into medicine, veterinary medicine and dentistry. Again, as I said before, I'm going to leave some more information up here and in the description box below about them and the opportunities they offer. If you enjoyed this episode, then please subscribe and give us a thumbs up because then you'll be notified when Sophia posts the next video, which is going to be on the whole interview process for veterinary medicine. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at So You Want To Be A Vet and check out our accompanying podcast series of the same name. Um, I've linked it down in the description below, but you can listen to this on Spotify, Google Podcasts and Apple Podcasts. Leave any questions you might have in the comments below and we'll do our best to get back to you. So thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!